Hi, I'm Laura Martin. I'm a part of Time to Revive, and I'm also Kyle Martin's wife. And I am excited to share with you today about um, the topic of prayer and how that's important in the discipleship making process. In 1 Thessalonians 5, 16, 17, and 18. It's one of my favorite verses. It says, to rejoice always, to pray without ceasing, and in all things give thanks, for this is Christ's will for your life. And you know, the second phrase of that is to pray without ceasing. And sometimes that can feel really daunting, but really um, what I have found is that in, wherever you're at along the day, when you're just talking to the Lord as your friend, you're rejoicing in what you see, you're talking to Him, you're asking Him, you're seeking Him to direct your steps, and you're giving thanks for the things that you see along your life. And so as we begin this process and we focus on prayer, think about it as the Lord directing your steps because He wants to hear from us and we are gonna hear from His Holy Spirit in this process. So it's not up to you in your way and your strength, but it's just talking to the Lord, abiding in Him, and trusting Him that He will direct your steps. Paul also says in Ephesians 6, 18, with all prayer and petition, pray at all times in the Spirit, and with this in view, be on the alert with all perseverance and petition for all the saints. Again, Paul is telling now the Ephesians to pray at all times. Whenever Kyle and I have questions about our faith or walking with the Lord, we always go back to the example of Jesus. What did Jesus do and how did he do this life in ministry and pursuing people? And I love what we find in the chapter um, one of the book of Mark. We see Jesus with his disciples, John and James. And he's um, healing diseases. They are, they actually are casting out demons. And all of a sudden it says in the early morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up left the house and went away to a secluded place and was praying there. So there he is in the middle of ministry and he, he goes off and he prays. But he doesn't stay there for long. Actually his companions are searching for him. And then they find him and then Jesus says to them in verse 38, let us go somewhere else in the towns nearby so that I may preach there also for that is what I came for. He uses his time in prayer, his time alone as a launching pad for what's to come. He kind of goes there to refill, but he doesn't stay there. There are seasons that we stay there for longer, but it's not about just waiting around. It's about getting filled up with the Lord and then going out and being back into action. One of my favorite Bible verses is Psalm 37, 4. Delight yourself in the Lord and He will give you the desires of your heart. You know, I'm a mom, I'm a mom to four kids, um, all under the age of 11 right now. And um, one of the desires of my heart for has always been to do a Bible study with one of them and some of her friends. And it was like so heavy on my heart that I it wasn't in my comfort zone yet in the sense of like, I didn't feel like I had it all together to start this, but I knew I couldn't avoid it any longer because I had prayed about it and the Lord was saying, now's the time. You've heard me talking about prayer and now it's your time. I want you to take a minute right now, just ask the Lord, say, Lord, who do you want me to disciple? What opportunity do you have for me out there that I can walk with someone? And you know what's gonna happen? He's gonna hear you. So I want you to open your ears, open your heart. You might have to take a leap of faith, and I want you to just follow the Lord's leading. Because when you're talking to Him, He's talking right back at you. You might not be able to get this opportunity out of your mind, and that's when you know this is the one for you.